Welcome. This is the November 15th Jail and Zones call. We have Greg, Jamie, Rod, Goran, Jan, and myself, Michael. Hopefully others will roll in. And uh, Greg, I know you are a busy person. Would you like to give us a bit of an introduction very briefly and an overview of what's new in the Enterprise Working Group? Uh, yeah, yeah, happy to. So, hey, everybody. I This is my, I think, the second of these calls that I've joined. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I'm pretty new uh, to the foundation. I um, joined in April. My title is the Director of Partnerships and Research. And really what that means is that, um, <clears throat> you know, whereas, like, historically before I joined there, like, the job of, like, connecting with, staying in touch with uh, end users, um, you know, whether those are vendors or enterprises or researchers or, you know, whatever, um, <clears throat> was kind of like distributed across a bunch of people at the foundation. Uh, they put it into one person, right? And so like, not that I don't collaborate, I obviously do, but, but it's ultimately my job to um, be the person who is focused on, uh, you know, connecting with FreeBSD users, uh, understanding, you know, their use case, how they use it, what sort of rough edges they're running into, and being that voice, right, into the foundation, and and I hopefully and ideally over time into the community. Um, <clears throat> you know, that this is a, this is a wonderful community uh, it's a it's a big community. It's a global community. It's a very technical community. I'm not an engineer, and so like you know, uh, but as like little projects crop up, and I have opportunities to connect with uh, people in the community, uh, I I am doing that, and I look forward to doing a lot more of that. So uh, one of the things that um, uh, I have taken on was uh, we received some very, very detailed feedback from a, a user of FreeBSD who is an enterprise, so a systems administrator, network manager at a, uh, you know, a business that, right, they don't sell software. It's not like a vendor, like, you know, like uh, like Juniper or NetApp or anything like that, right? It's a, it's a company that, you know, does other stuff, but they have servers and those servers run a variety of things and the operating system on those servers is FreeBSD. And they were hitting some limits with a number of areas. Um, <clears throat> and so, uh, so that, you know, and, and so he provided that feedback to me. I talked to my colleagues at the foundation and, you know, we said, look, you know, we, we don't have the resources to take on all of this, but what we can do is sort of see if there are other people who are interested in getting together and working as a group on this stuff. And so that's what the enterprise working group is, is all the people who have said that they're interested in helping. Um, and so, uh, you know, progress has been, as is the case in this community, sort of, you know, like not equally distributed across all 12 of the areas that were raised, right? If it's a matter of, um, you know, where we have the most interest and where we have the most volunteers um, and, and that kind of stuff. But uh, we, we kicked this thing off in, I want to say August. And as of now, we have like meaningful progress, uh, thanks uh, to the uh, phenomenal project management work and cat herding by Chris Moores in uh, the Beehive kind of jails, Beehive slash jails, but mostly Beehive manageability. So that was one of the areas that this FreeBSD user mentioned uh, would be helpful for him as a user. Uh, and so Chris has been working on that um, <clears throat> and, and participating in these groups, interviewing a lot of folks that are involved in this, uh, in this call. And so collecting requirements and then kind of going to the next stage of thinking about, okay, how do we close the gap between where we are now and where we would like to be? Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, for my part, I and Ed Mast have been, uh, having a lot of calls with folks, um, uh, at NVIDIA, um, and those those introductions have been made by another FreeBSD user company called Medify that is part of the NVIDIA like startup accelerator program. And so the goal there is to see what we can do to um, get better uh, 
sort of native support and FreeBSD for GPUs slash AI. So, um, uh, so we uh, had a call with them earlier this week that was very constructive. And basically NVIDIA was like, collect feedback, <laughs> right? From FreeBSD users on what they would like to see in terms of GPU and, uh, and AI. And so uh, I um, I emailed the Google group uh, about that um, earlier this week with a with a Google form that folks can fill out, and we've received four or five submissions so far. Uh, and then <clears throat> the last area that I've been directly involved in is um, getting to production ready with a uh, OCI runtime for FreeBSD. There's really two sort of leading approaches right now that are both experimental. Um, and uh, there is a, um, a, a new open uh, pull request within the Open Container Initiative proposing that we create a working group specifically to take these two approaches, um, you know, make a few like big design decisions and then, you know, get, get them across the finish line. So that those are the biggies. I am talking to the uh, person, Michael Osipov, um, who kind of kicked this whole thing off. He and I are going to talk on Friday because there are a couple of other areas that are like kind of these sort of like a little bit harder to wrangle, right? So uh, things like, uh, you know, having a... Um, kind of like a better end user experience for FreeBSD users around certificate authorities, um, you know, kind of like tightening up the Active Directory DNS integration kind of thing, you know, pushing some patches upstream because we're co we've collected a lot of patches downstream for Samba that we want to move upstream. And that is, by the way, another area that I've been working hard on. Um, so, uh, you know, one of the issues is that Samba, just like a lot of other big open source projects, is, you know, uh, they do their source control on GitHub and they use GitHub Actions for their CI. Unfortunately, GitHub Actions does not support FreeBSD. And the reason GitHub Actions doesn't support FreeBSD is because .NET doesn't support FreeBSD. Hmm. So I have, I have been having uh, uh, lots of calls and lots of emails with uh, a, a variety of people at Microsoft to try to fix that. Um, Excellent. And I, I wish I had a, 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 I wish I could say it's done, uh, but you know, but I'm going to keep at it right until they tell me to bugger off, which they haven't done yet. So <laughs> those are the big, those are the biggies. That's the big update. There's still a lot more work to be done across a variety of areas. Um, but uh, but it, you know we're making progress as quickly as we can. So I hope that was quick enough for you. Uh, that, was, that was fantastic. And a kick, now that we're at this, uh, uh, by the way, happy FreeBSD fourteen, which should be here yesterday or today or tomorrow. And at this little kind of turning point, I know there are people present who would love to know what it looks like to identify one of those focus areas, uh, build a proposal commit to seeing it through and working with the foundation and Ed and Jung to just see it through as a broader project. Could you briefly summarize that project, that, that process rather? Because I think there are some interested parties here. Yeah, totally, totally. So, um, and by the way, like uh, there is a, a wiki page for this. Mm -hmm. If you go to the FreeBSD wiki um, and- Put in the chat. Uh, uh, sure, okay, I'll oh. have to find it. Uh, the uh, quick draw uh, with uh, your URLs. I'm a, I'm an awful multitasker. Um, no worries. Do whatever uh, works. Uh, uh, Wiki, FreeBSD, Enterprise. There it is. Um, yep. So uh, chat. There it is. Okay. All right. There you go. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. So, so basically, like this has been kind of like a rolling process. It it like I said, it started with the initial list of things that Michael provided to me back in the summer of like areas where he's running into some some 
friction. Do um, give last right? names or at least an initial uh, so it's that we distinguish Ossip, the various Michaels. Yes. Osipov. Okay, Osipov. Yeah, he's a he's not on a division. It used to be not you. Used to be a division of Siemens. Uh, it's been spun out of Siemens. Uh, I forget the name of the company now, but it's like it's not a small company. It's a substantial deployment, right? Um, and um, and so what we did was when so so the process was. He, he kind of provided that. We met, we talked about it. We got back to him and we said, you know, this is sort of our understanding of the status across all of these areas. And, you know, you are right to raise these. These are areas where like, you know, you know, there's improvement that needs to happen for FreeBSD to be a, um, you know, to provide a better experience for people who want to use it the way you are using it. Um, and so we're, we're committed to helping. And so we said, step one, put out a call. Are there other people who would be interested in doing this? And the answer was resoundingly yes. There was like about 30 people when I put out the initial call who expressed interest. So we said, great. So we will kick this off. We held a meeting. Uh, and in that first meeting, we added to the list that uh, Michael had provided. Then what we did was we prioritized that list and we did that by a vote, right? So, you know, I just did a really simple Google form that, you know, forced people to rank them. And then based on the mean importance that the group that had assembled applied to each of them, that was how we came up with our prioritization. Um, and so then we basically said, okay, well, let's let's think about not and not each of these requires the same approach, right? Like there's some where like Beehive manageability is a good example, right? Um, where there are a bunch of tools out there, and that's kind of part of the problem is like if you're an enterprise, a you don't really know which one you should use, right? And b like each one is like really good at certain things and 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 sort of has a subset of capability but it's difficult to find one that kind of does all of it and none of them as far as i understand like is sort of like the default right that you have that you can just use right um so like that that's an example of one where it's like you know it's kind of a sprawling project um and uh you know, and and like and so so that's the one that that um, Chris Moore's has has uh, volunteered to project manage, right? Um, but like for some of the other ones, like um, uh, um, like like say OCI, um, you know, it's like it, it, there's a small set of of projects. None of them are really production ready, and we have a really clear view of exactly what this needs to be, right? Like there are existing runtimes for Linux, for Windows, for Solaris, right? We know what the blueprint is. We just have to make a couple of design decisions and then we've got to just execute and 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 fill it out, harden it, test it, document it and get it get it out there, right? So it's it's not that it's easy, it's still effort, it still takes work, but it's like it's a pretty clear path from like where we are now to where we want to be. So I, I think it's like, you know, there isn't like a, a, a single approach, I don't think. Um, okay, but have people but, mapped out a statement of work and a dollar amount of tied to it and a schedule and that kind of well, thing yet? Or is this still early days? I mean, it's everything so far has been volunteer. The only the only exception to the one that that that's not volunteer is um is the Open JDK. So Open JDK is something that uh it, you know has to be improved on FreeBSD to support enterprise deployments, right? Um, because enterprises run Java yeah. applications, um. And this is something that the foundation has has been on the foundation's radar for some time. And so the foundation is using, you know, a portion of the donations that it receives and is in the process of, uh, um, you know, reviewing applicants for an open contract position that we have that we have put on our website. Right. So so that one, like, yes, there's a, like a, a, a sort of a rough dollar figure associated with it. Um, 
but uh but yeah like uh for for beehive for example like chris has like a a a, a set of slides that are available on the wiki um and it documents exactly where he is. So it includes all the things that you mentioned there, Michael, but it doesn't yep. have a dollar figure because it's all volunteer. Yep. And you're obviously able to benefit, uh, leverage the efforts of this group for many years. So, and we're yeah, happy to do you. it. <laughs> thank you. Uh, is there a framework for the future if someone identifies something like, I mean, you looked at the mount smbfs and identified it as needing updates i happen to be using it as we speak and i'm actually pleased with it short of the performance but if a developer were to say i know how to fix that and mm. it would take x y and z do they simply notify you the board or someone in between uh Is there a process yeah i mean to follow uh, i mean i don't know that it would necessarily be that different i mean they can certainly contact me but i would imagine it would be you know, probably a more direct pass to just, um, you know, get involved in the development community the way, the way any developer would, right? Um, so, uh, but but not being familiar with that that exact subsystem and what's involved, I think sure. that's a kernel side thing. And so, you know, there's going to probably be a little bit of a steeper hill to climb if you're not already a kernel, you know, developer. But sure, but just for, purely from a political perspective is there a framework to for them to pursue funded development if they've got the skills lined up they're already uh, they're they're the right yeah 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 yeah, yeah there's How a, does, a does, oh, oh a fund, a funded development okay yeah. funded development yeah 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 now i got you so yeah there's we have a there's a form on our website um and i could you know i'll have to stop talking and go of look course for no, it no worries. Yep. i'm a really bad multitasker but no like worries. yeah if there is a way to suggest ideas okay um submit submit project proposals so Perfect. let me find that and you can put that in the notes because that's a yeah a good Fantastic. thing for people to um to have there it is apply for a grant uh, um exactly <laughs> here it is here it is here it is chats Excellent. You Thank go. you. Yep. So yeah, just so totally. that there's that tiny nudge of formalization that uh, people are often not operating within. So it's just yeah. like applying for a conference talk uh -huh. or you name it. So thank you so much for that. Yeah, uh, of course. That said, what questions do we have for uh, for Greg while we have him? Um, regarding the OCI uh, image support for JIT, it's kind of how to uh, just serialize file system content uh, and untar and apply whiteouts, similar to what, uh, for example, here, uh, OCI tar does. Uh, but um, the next level, once we have that, is basically how to uh, apply that to UFS and ZFS-based FreeBSD systems, because there are, again, implementation choices to be made. And the other question, once you have the file system stuff figured out, is how do we get uh, jail parameters uh, across? For example, the device uh, hiding and unhiding in DevFS. Or the next level after that is how do we get um, the networking side figured out so that we have um, OCMI, uh, sorry, CMI support so that you can have just a workload deployed and it gets the next free IP address from this DHCP server or something else. There's many FreeBSD specific features in the FreeBSD network stack which can be used to attach jails to some part of the host network, either through encapsulation or routing or bridging or so many other ways. And the there needs to be some support for that as well to make it useful because otherwise you can only have a default, which probably means bridge it to some interface, right. which is really only good enough for the most trivial of deployments. Correct. What, uh, Jan, none of that's quite answerable in my wild guess, but uh, how would you like to structure that? Do you want to structure that as questions somewhere or uh, hang out a list here? 
or what can we operate off? Of? I would go probably into defining the work order for what it means to support the whole OCI uh, ecosystem. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds what, like we have an OCI pull request. Do you have that handy? I can dig it up. Well, what, yeah, like what I would suggest, Jan, is look at, give me one second. Give me oh, one second. Yep. Um, Multitasking. Yeah, I'm secondly not good at it. Um, Don't worry. Um, okay. Look at what Doug Grabson has done here. Because I think I think he's he's answered at least some of those or addressed at least some of those topics that you raised. Um, <clears throat> uh, I know networking is one of the things that he has addressed, but uh, I think you'll, you may find uh, that it, it, you know, this is still experimental. So this is not um, something that, uh, you know, that, that would be like necessarily ready to, to, to use in production. Right. But but many of the things that you brought up have been at least started, to my knowledge. So that would I think that would be a good place to start. Right. Okay. And, and I see, found see, his pull request that you had, I think, shot me. I'll put it in chat there and boom, did it work? OK. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And, and I think the key there is like, you know, this is still a proposal. So I, I would just. I would I would suggest that the you know the right level of uh, well you know everybody here can decide on what the right level of involvement is. Um, you'll see that there's one person, Dave Cuddle 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 something uh, who he's offered... on the call. DCH, go ahead. Oh Jump yeah, in. hey DCH. <laughs> hey, Sorry, I, I could I was messing up. I messed up your last name. Who 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 offered to help right in the on on the pull request? Um, so. Uh, you know, I think folks should should feel free to do that as well. I'm just following it, right? Because nothing's going to happen until um, the uh, so the way that I understand it, and I don't have all the details, but basically, like the process for creating a working group for an extension like this is somebody has to propose it in that proposal, and you you go to the code, right? It isn't code; it's just a description of what this working group is gonna do. Um, uh, the, they have to say who are the initial developers, right? So it was Doug, it was Sam, and it was Ed Mast. Um, and then uh, DCH said, hey, let me know how I can help. Definitely interested in helping. I talked to a, somebody yesterday who, uh, is like a basically has like an infrastructure consulting company. So he's not a developer, but he said, I have a lot of customers that we could sort of POC this with, right? And and sort of bang on it a little bit before, you know, when it's like say beta, right? To to get it more sort of hardened and ready for production. And then um, you know, Michael, as you and I were talking earlier, I'm speaking with another person uh later today. To, who has also expressed interest. So, so you know that that's sort of the the status. So, like, I'm just kind of keeping an eye on it because now that now that the working group has been proposed, the technical oversight board of the Open Container Initiative has to vote on it. Um, and then once that's done and they've approved it, then the working group gets started. Um, so that's sort of where we are with that. Can you briefly describe the, how the OCI uh, organization board slash foundation operates? Are they Linux Foundation? Are they independent? Are they Apache? Are they something else? Um, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Right. Open Container Initiative is a Linux Foundation foundation okay. project, whatever you want to call it. Um, in my experience, they've been delightful to work with. Uh, right. Sam Carp, who is one of the engineers, right alongside Doug. Um, is the current, I forget the exact title, but head of the technical oversight board, right? So it's the equivalent of the core team. It's K, 
Um, Thank you. Uh, no problem. Um, uh, and so it's equivalent to the core team, right? Elected every periodic time. And but the difference is uh, technical steering committees, technical oversight boards at projects that are housed at the Linux Foundation always have a head, a president, whatever, right? And that person, you know, rotates. Um, uh, so that's that's a difference between like the way the core team runs and and the way the technical oversight boards run. So Sam is now the head of the technical oversight board okay. for the Open Container Initiative, and he's one of the people who created. So 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 Doug created an implementation called OCI Jails. Sam created an experimental implementation called Run J. You know, fundamentally they're they're aimed at the same problem, but they they are approaching things a little bit differently. And so, you know, once this working group is is sort of approved um, and is functioning, you know, one of the initial sets is, of of activities is going to be all right. Like, let's make some of these design decisions, right? Okay. So I, I you know, I, I think that's probably a, an activity that is sort of best done you know, with like, you know, a relatively small number of people, um, but, you know, not, but it's open source. So like anybody who wants to get involved can, and and certainly we, we you know, I think everybody would be interested in, um, you know, support and help from as many people as uh, right. can, can sort of commit the time. Um, so that's sort of the status. And that's about all I know, to be honest, like I, um, I, I've had some involvement. Like if you if you join, you, you know, the OCI Slack is is open. So you can join that. I've joined it. I haven't been on it in a while, but um there is a FreeBSD channel in there. Um uh you know, I've I've volunteered to help in, in the capacity that I can. So I happen to be a little bit of a Wikipedia hack and uh they needed uh to update the Wikipedia entry for the open container initiative. And so I volunteered to do that um, and did do that. And, you know, and it was really a very positive experience working with the whole community. So I'm very excited about it. Fantastic. And uh, Jamie, this is technically your call, but I really wanted Greg to paint that picture because this is a brand new view of the world that someone might consider long overdue. And we're very grateful it's happening. <laughs> So, oh, yeah. uh, Jamie, I'd be curious, just uh, hopefully this is a pleasant surprise to you, and you can think of how this can benefit jail in the broader you know, scope and make your life easier in some way or provide you opportunities. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> only definitely worth looking into. Uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, got that GitHub link there, but. Is OCI it's... on your radar in any way, shape or form? I'm sorry, is what on my radar? OCI, the Open OCI? Container Initiative. Yeah. No. Okay. No worries. No, I. Uh, I I can look at it, but no, it's okay. uh, it's new to me. I help that, um, Dave, you are a robot. Um, reboot your USB um, audio. We can't understand you. Yep. Dave, reboot your audio. Very quiet and chop <laughs> Okay, you do have a microphone symbol. Let her rip. I'll switch to the phone. Yeah. Switch yep. No better. This week is over cool, so. No better, Dave. Uh, try your different device. Now oh, there we go. Phone coming. Hey. Much better. So uh, yeah, it's not. It's 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 something with Zoom. It happens only on this call, and it works perfectly day after day elsewhere. Anyway, I was just I helped um, uh, Doug on the original um, pull request and the updates for the OCI stuff, and he really has done an amazing job um, on it. Um, if anyone wants, uh, I will dig up my one page of Cliff's notes for it. Um, but it's pretty awesome. Yeah, that is very good to hear. Yeah. Sort of my main over, uh, overriding concern with this is actually whether um, the larger OCI sort of foundation is something we can keep up with or whether it eventually has some sort of Linux divergence or not, and only time will tell. 
Yeah. Uh, I, I think we'll be okay on that one, but I think it's a valid it's a valid point to raise. And the reason that I think we'll be okay is because I mean they're explicitly multi-platform, right? There's already a runtime for Solaris. No There's kidding. a run. Yeah, nope, I'm not kidding. There's a runtime for thing. Windows, right? Um, and OCI, like there, and there's a there's a extension, right? So so there is an extension for Linux. So it's like, it's not like OCI sort of assumes Linux and then like everything else is an exception, right? It is it is definitely intended to be, you know, platform agnostic and oh, nice. and so the specification is designed. Um, are you sighing? Are you sighing DCH because of what I'm saying or because of your audio? My, my audio, yes. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um so like i i'm i it could change right like anything can change but as of right now right and and the other reason what that gives me sort of confidence is the fact that you know sam carp is the current you know head of the technical oversight board and is you know sort of you know named in the um the pull request proposing the uh um uh the working group is he linux oriented or something completely independent of that i mean i think he is more of a linux user but i mean you know i mean let's face it like most of the world is right like so you know but yeah he's he's more of a linux um he's more of a linux user Understood. Yeah. So, but but he he created Run J. Like he literally developed, and he works. He currently works at Google. Um, uh, and uh, he has you know indicated that he would like to do a twenty percent project that would allow him to work on FreeBSD stuff. So he he likes FreeBSD. He's interested in FreeBSD. He wants to, uh, you know do more with FreeBSD, but most of his background is, is Linux. That is all great news. RRT, ready to roll? Oh no, uh, Dave, are you back to the living in an audio sense? I'm still here, yeah. Excellent. Anything else uh, for Greg? Well, thank you, Greg, for all of that, because that's, again, a long overdue, much welcomed umbrella to operate in. And the fact that you're reaching out to organizations of all sizes is also fantastic. And perhaps the OCI ecosystem is a perfect example of where, well, we have an, a good chance to be an equal player insofar as they aim to be agnostic rather than strictly a Linux-derived fraud project or Microsoft derived, et cetera. So if there are no other final questions for Greg, I suggest we perhaps address Dan's questions or it's maybe a yeah. good news of a solution. Dan, I'm what you got? Share my, I'm sure. share my screen. I will stop my share. So for the background, we were trying, I was trying a new way of, um, second this hasn't come through there no what happened we see yeah. your quite high resolution uh full screen good good so um, i was trying it to would be good way. if you could uh, increase the font size and maximize the window maximize the window we see so we your full screen, and more, so more the terminal. font size is quite small. <laughs> OK, Definitely. I'm going to try something else. That's Come on, better. Plus, and then we can start reading it, maybe. But yeah. Yep. Ah, yes, sir. Getting there. Thank you. All right. So the background was, instead of trying to use Etsy FSTAB, I wanted to use this way of assigning a variable and getting everything mounted that way. 
the problem that we're having is that the files within these directories were not showing up. And I couldn't figure out why. Jan and I spent some time and about an hour after the meeting, we discovered this is the problem line. This is mounted, this has the attribute uh, no mount, can mount, can mount equals none. But it got mounted because this uses legacy mount, which meant that this got mounted, overwriting all this stuff, and then restarting the jail would remount this stuff and it'd be visible again. So this is the before and this is the after. And the only difference is removing that one line. So this is this is the typical ZFS situation of where you get one thing mounted first or, or last and it overwrites everything else, overlays everything else that you're trying to see. Um, Dan, something you can do to avoid mm -hmm. that, instead of using legacy mounts like this, you can use ZFS list dash, dash H uh, dash S mount point um dash o name to get you drop that your head might yeah, be let me put that in ZFS <laughs> list dash h dash s nine point dash uh we check yeah. and um, I think I'll probably go back to the F stab. I may go back to the F stab because yeah. for, for my uses this isn't an advantage to me over S stab. Yeah, so the important thing is if you can do that and you can also uh, print out a can mount and mount it, then filter that to build up a, uh, a loop over the result. And uh, this basically gives you a pre-sorted list uh, yeah. of data sets. Um, and the data sets are sorted by mount point and because basically shorter paths sort before longer paths. Uh, you avoid this problem and you can also ask it for, let me basically give another example, something like this. Mm -hmm. And in the broader context, Jan has done some really good work to untangle. Well, if you do something like this. Uh, uh, jail jail uh, data sets for trees, go ahead. Uh, now you have all the information, you filter the uh, it so that you only keep the not mounted where can mount is not set to off. And then you basically invoke ZFS mount on each data set. And you get only the unmounted ones mounted, which are either set to auto mount or uh, non auto mount, but still mountable. And right now I'm of the opinion that it would be best if basically the jail data sets are only mounted when the jail is running because you kind of have to tear down everything mounted underneath the jail uh, path to be sure that you have a clean state. And there's nothing in the way uh, because otherwise it's so annoying to basically do it. It's easier to just unmount it all and then mount it again if that's possible, uh, unless you have, yeah, okay, a temp FS you want to preserve would be the one case where you can't do that. But so other than that. Dan, are you out of the woods on that? Yeah, that deal is fine now. Great. Um, the, 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 main, the main goal I was trying to obtain is making sure that everything mounted under the jail got um, used when the jail stopped, uh, mainly so that I could manipulate it when the jail wasn't running. And if it's always mounted, that's a problem. Or rather, it's an extra step. Sure. Well, both of you do keep us posted because I've seen some very good layout handling with the can mount no auto with uh, with and very briefly, Jan has been doing uh, cloned snapshots below the system for updating, and that's been a nut to crack from the day that ZFS arrived on FreeBSD. So great work, both of you. So Dan, I, I'm still not clear what the original problem you were trying to solve with this was. 
Um, the original problem was when the jail reboot, when the host rebooted, none of the mm -hmm. files were available in the jail. And that's because the parent data set was getting mounted over top of them and overlaying it and giving me a blank directory. Uh, but that's because you're using an FS tab instead of letting ZFS just do the right thing, I think, then. Yes. Yes. Ah. That's 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 yes, a so that was the question. Why why when you're just using let, letting ZFS do the work for you already? Because I don't want it I want that stuff unmounted when I stop the jail. Uh, I would still just do that with a single ZFS invocation and in the whatever that final phase is, and that yep. seemed to me um, a lot cheaper. Um, yeah, you're right. You need multiple uh, ZFS invocations because ZFS mount can take only a single data set per invocation. But it will unless mount you want to mount it all, and that is normally something you don't want to do to assume that uh, all you are now in charge of the whole mounting of everything on the host. Hmm. I, I, I'll send in my little Ansible snippet stuff that I use for this, but I don't have that problem, and I don't see if, that this is different to what he's trying to do. Um, okay. I'm sure I'll learn something about your infrastructure, Dan, and go, okay, that's a, yeah, oh. <laughs> that's, that's the only way to fix no, this. Me. The main reason is that the, the data needs to be accessed when the jail is up. But when the jail is not up, it doesn't need to access it. And I yeah. want to be able to manipulate it when I stop the jail. Yeah. And these it's are ones without the jail data set. Um, yeah. One of you the problems know. is... Dave, what were you saying? And I'm assuming here from this, you don't have that you don't use the the ZFS jail functionality then for this. No, the jail. Um, sorry, what what do you mean? No, do you mean are the ZFS file systems jailed? No, they're not. Hmm. I don't. I don't have that problem with another jail. Another jail needs to be able to do rollbacks and stuff like that, but this one doesn't. It just needs to be able to write. Uh, uh, the problem is that if the jail command has failed partway through and failed to undo it correctly and now you're left or a jail has just been garbage collected by the kernel, you can't know which system state you've encountered uh, the next time this starts up. So you have to tear it down completely into a safe state before you can start mounting things again because it could be in an arbitrarily crazy state, like maybe someone allowed the jail to do mounts and it did some stupid stuff with mounted its own little file system here and there or something. Uh, and Jan, that said, that how is your to... progress on state tracking? Uh, I, I wrote Jimmy the mail we talked about uh, last okay. week. Okay, fantastic. And he received and, it. Uh, while typing out that mail, I came up with an observation. Please. That so there is a kernel module in ports which came up time and time again in this call, yep. uh, which basically generates DevCTL events for jail state changes. Uh, so that allows DevD to respond to uh, jail creation, jail parameter updates, uh, or jail destruction, stuff like that. Jail attachment, even so, the process attaches to a jail that also gets reported. Yep. Um, the problem is that you can have only DevD as the single consumer of DevCTL events in FreeBSD uh, by design, which makes sense. FreeBSD 14 has um, Netlink support as optional feature, and with, if you combine that with the Netlink generic. A system event socket type, which is available through the NL sys event kernel module, you get the option to have multiple um, 
consumers for DevCTL events because it basically forwards DevCTL events to uh, Netlink uh, multicast subscribers. Mm -hmm. Netlink multicast is only best effort, but whenever you lose a message because uh, the kernel had to drop the buffer out of memory pressure, um, then you get a receive error with e, uh, no buffs according to the Netlink specification. So basically, then you can do what JLS does, loop over the jails and pull the status only when you've basically been too slow to consume the state changes. With all of that, you get a, the option to resync your view in user space of how the kernel state looks. Of course, the kernel does not lock anything, so you're can only observe the changes, but you can now reliably observe state changes of jails. Fantastic. So that basically means we could use this to implement what has been described as the jail daemon in the, these calls, uh, and have a daemon which really is able to efficiently, without active polling, only reactive if it has been too slow to consume events, um, stay in sync with the uh, state of the kernel jail side of things and then perform actions in response to it. Maybe, I don't know, uh, inform the uh, syslog forwarder that it would be really nice if this jail had uh, a syslog socket. Mm -hmm. And then you could have a little helper which just really attaches to the jail uses its already brought in network connection to uh, send log messages. And then you have a centralized logging for all jails uh, without having to restart the hosts log D or something and without having it be unable to uh, tell apart different jails or uh, even worse host and jails. Yeah, stuff like this or poor assign IP addresses to the created uh, EPAIR interfaces inside the jail or something. Are there any questions for Jan on his observations? The and problem is, is that this is basically a really, it's a maybe too clever by halfway of combining uh, kernel features in unexpected ways rather than a well-designed interface to this uh, to consume the state. So of course, if we could have something like jail descriptors uh, and a uh, descriptor to basically monitor the whole jail system to learn about new jails and attach to them and derive a file descriptor for them, that would be a lot nicer to consume, but... Okay. This Keep could your research coming. work with Billy, the current kernel state of things without having to change anything. Any questions uh, in for kernel space? Well, keep that research coming. I will interject that Greg, uh, this week, I mobilized a few people on some very select Windows related documentation because the wiki page slash Samba is virtually useless and the handbook gets hand wavy. And so we can connect offline regarding that. Any one else with uh, ideas, questions, concerns, topics, while we have you all. Jamie? He's on, go ahead. Any question for Jamie? Did you get a chance to uh, read the detailed description of this second in the second half of my email? I really, I looked through it, but I was concentrating on the uh, part about what, you know, you want done in the, yeah, in the short -term first goal. step. Yeah, yeah. short-term goal. Yeah, exactly. Makes sense, but... Yeah, the long-term goal, yeah, I mean, the uh, the jail descriptors are definitely part of the long-term goal. You know, it's uh, the fact that you can combine together what's currently available and get something like this is good, but yeah, like you mentioned, you know, but it's only for reading, basically. You can yeah, only observe state changes. You can't use it to have a race-free and potentially a clean interface, which can 
in the future maybe allow us to have rootless jails because a file descriptor avoids all the raciness problems with uh, shared namespaces. And it, JLive, it does that JLive except for names are shared namespaces. I would still have the jails have a name. Of course, but uh, you should be able to basically make sure that the, the jail you're addressing hasn't been destroyed and replaced by another one, which is not exactly what you meant. That's true. We do but want that. Only partially brought up again because it's still in the process of maybe the file systems are being mounted into it. And there is a jail here, but it maybe it doesn't have its network interfaces yet. And you were in the process of doing something to the jail for which it needs its network interfaces, and they haven't been moved over into the new VNet, or maybe the new one doesn't even have a VNet anymore, or the other way around. And so, um, yeah, ha having uh, the way to reference it by file descriptor and then be told, yeah, well, your file descriptor has been revoked um, or something. If the jail has been destroyed, that would be really useful. Yeah, true. Yeah, it's still it's still the gold standard and end goal here. But um, right now, as, if, as long as you know that you have a single daemon at first um, side, you could use the... I assume that it looks like it. I haven't found a reason why it shouldn't work, but also I didn't have the time to really write a good example of it. I've only managed to consume a few messages via this API and then figure it out. But yeah. Other topics, questions, ideas, funny jokes. Well, everyone, I say we call it there. Some are perhaps going to join for ZFS in about, what, two hours? 11, 12, 1. So two hours, and then it sounds like, Greg, you have a call regarding a few topics. Good luck with that. John is a delight to work with. And if that's it, I'm happy to call it at 11.56, 10.56 Pacific. I have your blessing. <laughs> yep. Second. Super. Excellent. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Michael. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Ciao. It's been a pleasure. Bye. -bye. Bye.